it is I, the Rank 7 Ragabash of the tribe called RPG. Now I'm returned with a video requested by Lynx Panda. Lynx Panda asked me to go over some of the positive aspects in terms of player types. You know, we talk about these horrible game masters. We talk about these horrible players because I want to get those ideas out there so people understand. And plus, you know, it's just funny to rip on things. Uh, and those videos <laughs> really pull strong views and loads of likes. So let's see if me being nice actually gets me anywhere. I don't think it will. It never has any other time. So let's see. But we're going to go through, and I'm just going to use some reference points of the Dungeon Master's Guide to the, the types in here. Um, well, other than uh, set, setting exploration, uh, to me, almost doesn't seem like a type. Uh, I'm not sure if I've ever really met someone that didn't enjoy that. But they definitely choose completely different terminology than I would use. But the, the types that I'm kind of focusing on here are more the story and the psychodrama. Although, I do have some qualms the way they actually use the word psychodrama in terms of the full listed definition, but uh, you guys don't want me to get overly pedantic and begin to explain things. Now, now, let's talk about these. These two styles merged with taking out bits and pieces of what they put in there are essentially how I begin to teach people, how I indoctrinate individuals into the cult of RPG with explaining these sort of tools. Now, for the psychodramas, they're basically talking about someone who wants to experience the emotions. And I've talked about that so many times. You know, the psychological paper mache that you put over your eyes and you look out and you see the world of the game master. You experience it. You know, you, you bathe in the ethereal shower of mental creativity that, that's put upon you. And you can indulge that. You can develop out these different psychological conditions uh, that you have you have devised for the character, you know, so that uh, you can really get into the skin, get into the mindset of someone else, look out through a different pair of eyes, and then see how that develops. See where's the dynamic changes. Where are the the passions? How can you feel it? How deep can you feel it? How much uh, you know an emotional connection can you make there? And a style. That can come down to being, you know, little little bits of um, even method acting kind of coming in. Of course, method acting is usually a bit more extreme than the majority of players. You know, you don't usually have people showing up at your house that day like I am, you know, Garnor the Dwarf all day, you know. But there are some aspects of that that would tone down a little bit, could really work well when, with a game staying in character for prolonged periods of time, not jumping out of character the second the spotlight flips to someone else and certainly not hogging or interrupting someone else's time to play with foolishness. So, you know, with the, with the psychodrama, it's just about exploring the psychology. And they, they go into sort of, I guess they, they try to put the bad slot, oh, well, don't use uh, a game as, you know, therapy. If you need therapy, go get therapy. But they also talk about the fact that anyone doing that can have a degree of catharsis. And, you know, I suppose it could if you're digging in, trying to inflict you know, your emotional wounds on the rest of the group. Uh, you know, I've seen people do some weird stuff on here, so I guess I've seen a, 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 a worse side of it in, in terms of, but, you know, I mean, these were just, you know, pathetically damaged people that really couldn't take the strain and stress of that. And, again, role-playing games really aren't for, for people that have a disconnect from reality. You want to have, you want to be able to disconnect from reality when you're playing the game. But if you're already already fractured and disconnected from reality, there's a reason they put you know those disclaimers in the front of books. They don't want somebody running off like Tom Hanks and mazes and monsters. Uh, it's just a bad look for for the game. I don't think we've had any of that since with like the '90s, with that vampire goof. But at least it's been nationally reported, and it's kind of a sensationalized thing anyway. So. You know, you want to have, uh, I guess, some degree of balance there where you're, you can sit there and break down and cry in character. And I will cry in character, but, like, I'm crying in character. Like, it's not me crying because I'm upset and freaked out. Like, I'm trying to cry in character. Um, you know, it's only going to be hard for me because my eyes are going to get a little dry. But, you know, I can't do it. I have done it. I've had other players do it. But it's in character. It's acting. It's part of bringing the believability. I want, you know... The other player at their group, like my man Austin, say, "Oh yeah, well he's really, how I can believe it." You know, I want him to get as close to being able to believe it's that image that my character there 
doing the thing. So any, anything I can add to helping create that, I'm going to do. But that's different from, say, somebody just having a nervous breakdown in the middle of a game. <clears throat> so, you know, and I talk in a video about uh, forming a group to you know, try to troubleshoot those problems before, before they even start. You know, you just don't, you don't need somebody like that around that, that's going to uh, pull the whole thing down and get some very awkward, very uncomfortable aspects. I've seen, I've seen a few people flip out in the course of 25 years of gaming. It, it's been uh, unpleasant. But it's been a rare thing, too. It's very, very rare. And I've gamed with a multitude of people. And a lot of it, you know, I've heard other things like secondhand stories where I've seen things, you know, that were the aftermath or fallout of things where I'm like, okay, that, that story was probably pretty legitimate. So, you know, it, it can happen. But with the, with, with the style, which, which you're really taking is, you know, you're making... The, these emotions and you're developing, you're getting into the character. It's not about, well, what's my character's strength? What's my character's uh, wisdom? You know, what is what, what, what damage does my uh, battle axe do? It's not about that. It's about the character and you're going to show up and you're going to have a better time than someone that's just there to, to slay goblins in a power game. You know, you're not going to have those bored moments because every moment you're inside the character's head, you are in that perspective and you're enjoying it. You're able to uh, internalize and that's where a lot of the ideas and techniques I use, like soliloquies and so forth, come from. Because I say, well, I have all this internal thought process. When I'm, when I'm not sitting there, I'm not out of character. I'm still in character, but it's an internal aspect because right now I can't talk. So i got to think on the character's thoughts. But how do I express that? Well, you know, that's where we bring the soliloquy in so that we can explain the thoughts of the character. So that the, the game master, oh, okay, oh, now I see I have a greater depth of understanding for that. It's like, you know, a little basically bit for what we like to call the audience. It's it say we were presenting a movie or, sh or television show and there were people watching it. So that you, not that there are, but that you have that, that same kind of focus. <clears throat> Where we get, it allows you to get deeper into the character because the character's sort of monologuing uh, in so many ways on, a, on a, just about any TV show or a movie, you're going to have a character doing things like that. And it's for the audience, so you can get more into the character's head, you can understand it more. And you want your your game master to be able to understand your character better. The better they understand them, the more they're going to be able to get into them. The better they're going to be able to write for them. You know, you don't want your care, your game master writing stuff for you out of left field. Uh, you're just like, wow, this is what I thought you wanted. It's like, no, dude, I wanted uh, to play third base, not right. What are you doing? You know, this doesn't make any sense. But they're like, well, I didn't know. You didn't tell me. And he's like, oh, I didn't tell you, I guess. But if you do, you know, communication solves problems. I'm a firm believer in that because it's true. And now with the story. You know, they actually talk about that. They mention that there, and God, I've talked about that about a billion times. You know, uh, let me see, what does it say here? Uh, for players, the game is like a movie or television show, but one of which they're taking part in the story. And they also say something here that really annoys me. It says, for most neophyte gamers, a simple, straightforward dungeon bash is best. No, that is not best. That is not best. That's trash. It's always trash, always been trash, always will be trash. I don't care if you're 10 or uh, 200. You know, that that's not a good style to bring people into because it can kind of stagnate people, and it can turn people off from the game. What's best is to bring them in with creativity and interest and, and try to captivate their imaginations. Now, is a 10-year-old going to be able to get into the the nuances of, of role-playing and, and psychodramas the same way a 25-year-old? Well, no. But there's still a way you can, you, and I'd have to do a completely different video on that, but a way you can monitor and, and, and figure that in there, you know, with giving them certainly you can give some fighting, you can give more fighting, you can give more of treasure and sort of immediate gratification rewards, but at the same time, you know, you can push it and, and pull it all towards that goal of role playing, all towards the goal of getting them to accept and embrace the the aspect of the game there, so that they're they're hooked. You know, that's what the hook is. Role playing is the reward. It is the hook that keeps people coming back. Because guess what? I mean, you don't get to go home with any of the gold. Like it's all make believe. And so are the swords and the dragon. It's all make believe. But what wasn't make believe is the performance you put on that was real, so that's something you could take away. It's something you can actually look legitimately at. You know, I have people, you know, I don't care about the time you got a plus five axe. It doesn't matter to me. I don't care about that. But you know, you say, well, I did this and this, and uh, I was doing this stuff, this cinematic aspect. Oh, okay, well, that's pretty cool. I actually quite like that. Um, so for the story, you know, for the for the role playing, one of the things I kind of bring up here is. Well, these people aren't going to break character. They're going to make a character, and they're just going to plow through regardless of if they cause any kind of problems for the group. And you, you should do that. However, I've always found a happy medium 
is to put this into your character. Try to figure out a way that your character, in character creation, when you are making the character, I said this before and some fucking fool did not understand what I was talking about. So I'm trying to make sure that this is really understood. And when you are making the character, now we're not talking about metagaming here, we're saying when you make the character, make a character in a way that the character can actually be able to have a, at least a good shot at working with people. Now, you might make the character, other people might do something, you are like, well, sorry, dude. I mean, yeah, you probably shouldn't have let this guy play a draw elf. Like, that was very clearly understood how my character reacted to that. But you did, so, <clears throat> guess you're getting hung near draw. You know, you gotta, you can't just cave the character. But at the same time, don't make a character that's just gonna be ridiculous. Like, you know, you can make a character that will just not get along. It will just be a huge problem. No one will be able to get along with that character. But at the same time, you can make a character that has a good potential. So in character creation, try to come up with a way where you're actually be able to function. If you're playing a group-style game, make a character that at least has a good shot of being able to function in the group <clears throat> instead of just forgetting about that. And that's what I do. And, it, you know, it serves me real well. I, you know, I don't have to make you know, lots of compromises and so forth. I figure out, you know, the character might work in one aspect, like he's actually trying to manipulate the other people to do what he wants, but it still serves around the whole purpose, you know, bringing them together. And it doesn't matter what the in-character motivation are to do that, whether your character is a dick or your character is cool to him or whatever, as long as it still facilitates the ability to work together, the, the players, will, you know, they'll, they'll be fine with that. They'll be like, oh, you, you know, you're trying to do my character. It's like, well, yeah, man, but that's what my character would do. He would dupe your character, and your character would just go along with it, probably, because guess what my bluff is? You know, guess what my charisma is? Guess what that, that role-playing is? That was good role-playing. Like, oh, yeah, you know, as long as you have people to sell, you know, whatever. You know, it can, it can work real well. And, you know, it always comes down to that. You know, people have to be willing to sell. If they don't, just don't play with them. If, if they're not going to sell for you, just find other people to play with. They, you know, I mean, you could try to talk to them. But, you know, you're going to end up in a situation where, you're just not able to resolve those, those sort of things. For the story type player, you want the game master to be able to handle things on the fly, to make adjustments, to present NPCs, and you want those NPCs really fleshed out to explore the NPCs. You have background stories and ideas, and you want those backgrounds fleshed out. You want that to mean something in the game. You don't want the game master to go, uh huh, uh, well, that doesn't matter. We're just going to do my story. This kind of player works very, very, very poorly in the frustrated Game Master style, very poorly, and it also works very poorly in the Slaughterhouse Game Master, because you put a lot of time, this player is going to put a tremendous amount of time in building their character, building the psychology, you know, choosing each of their stat points very carefully, not so they have the best intelligence for their wizard, so that their wisdom is exactly, and stats matter, you know, what your stats are predicate how you role play your character, why I had to try to explain this to people, but, uh, they want their stats exactly right. So they can say, okay, well, my character actually, you know, yeah, he's a wizard, but he was only kind of like the smart wizard. Like, it's, around the other wizards, he was a dumbass. But to a normal person, he's smart. He's got like a 13 intelligence. So he's like, yeah, I'm pretty smart, but not really by a wizard standard. So, you know, he, he has this inferiority complex. So boom, 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 right there, we're rocking and rolling. Which you're like, but yeah, man, I, mean, I have so much more common sense than the other wizards, you know. I would take other approaches because the fact that my character had like a 16 wisdom. So, you know, what about that? But what if your character, you know, and then we start, you know, we start going into the nuance. Maybe you're, you're like an AT strength wizard. Oh, yeah. I'll be clumbering people. Yeah. Magic missile. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it's another casting. You know, like, oh, God, why is the wizard pummeling me? Uh, oh, no, he's press slamming me now. Yeah, you. So, you know, when you bring those kind of aspects, it could change your role playing. It could bring different ideas. And that's from. A points array, how you want to do that. I've had multiple game masters literally hand me my character back. Like, they thought it was the first time I'd ever played a role playing game. Like, and they'll kind of look at me like they feel bad, like, kind of like I'm pathetic, like, oh, no, you don't understand. Your rogue needs open locks, and you shouldn't have your lowest stat and dexterity. Why is your highest stat intelligence? Charisma, that doesn't make any sense. No, no, your rogue definitely doesn't need wisdom. I don't know, you, you want to get this, this, um, this dexterity, then maybe with constitution. Your strength probably should be at least a bonus. I'm like, no, man. I know what I'm doing. I just want to actually be able to build clocks here. I would, you know, I need these skill points for my concept. I need this high intelligence for my concept. There's a concept. All the characters begin with a concept. That's very important to understand this type of player. They have a vision and they want to put that vision 
on to on the numbers and they want to play and reflect that vision so that it all comes around and it comes out beautiful that's what they're looking to do and when you cater the care like that when you can allow them to suspend the greatest belief uh, disbelief you know you're going to produce something that's awesome and that kind of character is going to push the pace for you and they're going to be a real boon to you and to develop players like this is going to really eliminate everything this, this type of player isn't going to power game they're not going to minimize they're going to make a believable real character that reflects the ideas. You know, I've had players like this. I just, uh, oftentimes, just make whatever you want, man. I don't care. Just make whatever you want. I don't care. You know, I've run that style. Just, just no points. Just make what, what looks reasonable to you with the skills, with the stats, whatever. And I've never really known. Well, actually, I actually have to know what you do. But, yeah, and it can work. Because they're, they're not, they want to make, they want to make this. You know, they don't want to make something that's, that's, has a the hit bonus. They're trying to make something unless their character should have a hit bonus, and it makes sense. And you know, if you have a whole group of players like that, I mean, you never have a problem. They'll they'll just be, you know, and there'll be long amounts of role playing. You know, for uh, one little scene can go on for the time that most games go on in my game. You know, they're really oh my character. Oh yeah, well we're gonna have you know a fight, but not a oh zero to sixty and I kill you. No, it's like we're arguing because guess what? People that go into an adventure for long periods of time and have all these you know post-traumatic stresses and so forth, they're going to fight, you know, they're going to get into arguments. You know, you argue with your friends. Imagine being with your friends, like, every single day, 24 hours a day, months on end, and you're doing insanely dangerous stuff. You're going to have arguments. You're going to have differences of view. You're going to have different perspectives, and those can manifest in, in, in amazingly quality role play. So there is awesome type of players, part one. So we'll see if you guys actually watch this video in abundance. And let me know, what do you like better? Do you like... Do you like hearing the good jank talk, or, or do you like me actually uh, putting some things over? So we'll see.